Still nothing. Uh oh. Oh, phew. Yikes. Okay. Mm. Uh, three plus years of doing this. How long have I been streaming like this? And I still, still mess it up sometimes. Anyhow, how's it going, everybody? Thanks for being here. Happy Sunday. Hope you all having a good Sunday. Hope you all ready for Halloween tomorrow. Woo. Everybody got uh, big light shows going on. Craig was number one. Vanessa, right there. Right second place, close behind. Nicholas, Nicolau, and Ken, and Steve. All right. Boy, you were close, though, Vanessa. I don't know how you guys do it so fast. You guys are on there before I can even think about getting set up. Oh, man, who else is working on the Christmas lights display this fine Sunday? Probably plenty of people, Jason. Plenty of people. Sounds like you are. Just got the YouTube chat open eventually. Oh, it takes a, takes a second sometimes, huh, Tony? It sure does. Macro femur. What's NL? Netherlands? You in the Netherlands? All right. Well, first thing, first order of business, as always lately, that one. PCB Way, thanks again for sponsoring, as always. They're great. If you guys haven't uh, found a reason to use them, I hope you do. 3D printing, sheet metal folding, injection molding, and of course, PCBs. So they're good to me, be good to them. And there's a coupon in la description. All right? Okay. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I have um, some, some really fun things I did this week. I guess another thing I better do and I'm not exactly sure how I was going to do this because camera wise, it's a little tricky, but, um, 3d printer. Remember when I did the Neptune three 3d printer? Do you guys remember that? Some of you that, have, that are on all the time, uh, how long has it been less than a year? I would think, but somewhere, somewhere back in time, uh, earlier this year, maybe I did a, the Neptune three, the Elegoo, E L E G O O. E L E G O O. They make lots of stuff. They uh, sent me a 3D printer called the Neptune 3. It's a small form factor similar to like the Ender 3. Uh, to me, the best quality about it was the um, the nozzle is also the bed leveling sensor. So you hit bed level and it levels, right, it just, with the nozzle. It doesn't have to have the separate little poker to level the bed. So they've now come out with the Neptune 3 Pro. And I'm sure we can't find any pictures of that on here because it's probably not for sale yet. Neptune 3 Pro. But let's see if we can. Yeah, so now they have they have the Neptune 3. This is the Neptune 3, but the Pro is the new one. Um, I can show you. I'll show you what I can here without a ton of camera angles. But um, the Pro has a direct drive nozzle so or direct drive extruder so this extruder on the neptune 3 is the bowden kind that's where they've got the gear here that pushes the filament the filament goes all through this tube and then into the extruder that's that's good uh because then the extruder head here this whole piece weighs less so there's less kind of wobble sometimes <clears throat> it, you know when it moves because it moves fast and it stops so you got momentum and it's got to stop but if you're trying to print uh, certain kinds of filament, especially flexible filaments, then having all of this length of tubing here for the filament to compress is a problem. So that's when you want a direct drive. So the, the, um, the Neptune 3 Pro has direct drive. It also has two Z-axis uh, motors, and it's got the same bed leveling, the same great, very adhesive, good sticking metal um magnetic bed they did some things to improve some of the stuff that i felt was a problem with this one this one has um the cable management on this original uh elgu neptune 3 was kind of ugly i thought but they did a lot to um to fix it on this one um I'm quite happy with it so far. And I printed one thing with it and it came out beautiful. They also changed where the power supply is, which I like a lot. They took the power supply from here and they put it back under here. Um, so let me see if I can find some pictures because I did do some video of it. This is something else. Sneak peek. Sneak peek. Who's in the market for a 3D printer? Oh boy. 
So here's some here's some video of it. Here's a little bit of video of it. Um, can you see that okay? Yeah, you can. So they 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 decorated it up a bit, and they did a lot to keep all the cables uh, in a, a bit of a container there, I guess. Um, it comes in just two pieces. It's pretty easy to put together. You got this piece, and then you got the upper rack piece, like that. And you just put that on four screws. You put that together. Pretty simple stuff. Um, I did have to tighten this little bed. It was got a little wobbly, but see, they did a little, some decorative stuff. There's the big, uh, direct drive extruder. Um, but there it is. It looks pretty good and it prints, it prints great. It prints great. Um, I don't know what the cost is going to be on this and I'm sure they'll give me a link at some point. It also has the filament run out sensor, which, uh, you know, these, these kinds of things used to be really premium add-on bits um, for printers, but now it should be kind of standard stuff anymore. Let's see, I'm trying to find the, I did a time lapse. What's happening? There's my time lapse. We'll let the time lapse run. Printed out this little, this little dude. We can get a close-up view of the little dude here on the other, oh, Stopped part way through. Or did it finish? Boop. Yep, finished. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's do this desk camera thing here. Boom. There we go. All right. Boom. Oh, it's too bright. It's white. But anyways, it looks gorgeous as you would expect. It. I feel like pretty much every printer that I've had prints great on the first print, like amazing. And some print really well for a while after that. And then some start to start to deteriorate in their in their uh, quality. I think it might be because you need to adjust them. You need to make some, you know, tighten some things up and stuff. But it printed this really well. A couple things I was really impressed with. I was really impressed with this overhang. And I don't know what they sliced it at, but this guy's chin here, it really should have had some sort of uh, droopiness to it with the way that it overhangs, but it didn't. It did a really impressive job. So I'm always happy to have a new 3D printer and thank you again to Elgu for sending me this one and uh, you'll hear more about it later because that's one I'll be using. It's going to be my main printer now for the next little bit. All right. Uh, I find it hard not to buy more used for parts Ender 3 Pros on eBay for $75. It's amazing how cheap things are. It is amazing. I don't know what this cost. I mean, 200 bucks. This was the non-pro version, right? That is so doggone cheap. It's like, how do you not have that? This is like a, a, a just a standard tool anymore for most people that make a, a decent amount of things, right? And nothing better than having multiple 3D printers. If one 3D printer is good, more 3D printers is clearly better. Used clipper. Use clipper. Let's use what's a clipper, Mr. Wizard? Is that a slicer? Made it. What's up? I have to set up a, a wrap of WLEDs on the other part of my balcony for Halloween. Nice, Ryan. Nice. Ship it to Australia. Probably seven hundred dollars. <laughs> Dang it. Dang it, Australia. Which is so crazy because you're right next to China, right? A lot closer. I wonder why. Why is it so much? You're welcome, Paul. You're welcome. All right, so that was one thing I wanted to do was go over that. Let me tell you about another problem that I solved, and then we'll, I'm happy to answer questions. And um, you know, we can, we'll get into LED stuff because that's just what we do. That's just what we do, right? This time of year, it is all about the LED stuff. So some of you may have been aware or remember that. Um, I had, I was having some, some struggles. Why did that look so funny? The colors look funny. I was having some struggles up at the Hubert house this past uh, couple of weeks. And the struggles stemmed primarily from another one of my charge controllers on the solar system going out. Um, so I had no solar production. So I was running and I had to run the generator. So I had to run the generator full time because up until this past week, 
my only method for measuring the battery voltage for the battery that runs the house really was through the charge controller. So if the charge controller goes out or if the breaker trips on the charge controller, I have no more way to know what the house battery voltage is. And the most important part about that is my super backup fail safe method for turning on the generator to charge the battery is, you know, the battery gets down to a certain voltage and then the charge controller tells the generator to turn on, assuming there's not enough solar and you're using a lot of power, right? So that's like the, the last line of defense. Is the generator kicks on to charge the batteries so they, they stay charged. Well, if, this, if the charge controller goes out, that whole system fails. It doesn't happen. And that happened to us over the summer and the batteries just went down to like nothing. You know, they were, fortunately, they have a BMS that shut them off before they could get damaged, hopefully. Um, they still worked, but... You know, we had to charge them up from scratch almost. So this is the second time that the charge controller has gone out and left me without a battery voltage meter and without a means for, for making this automation work. And that can't be, right? I can't, I can't have that. Cannot have that. Not much of a warning. Oh, yeah. Hey, sorry. I did say I was going to give you a warning. Sorry, I just got home and I just said, let's get on. Sorry, sir. Good enough. I'm getting on soon. <laughs> I did say I would give you a warning. You're right. Anyway, so, sir, good enough. What brand of charge controller do I have? Robert says they are the Midnight, uh, Midnight Classic 150. And according to the Midnight guy, um, you know, I, I want to believe that they're not bad. Like these these things, I, I want to believe that they're not. It's not the charge controller's fault. He seemed to think that it had something to do with where the battery positive was landing and that if there was a large, uh, and, and this is why I, I think it makes sense, there, if there's a large AC load turn on, like you know, a hot tub or hot water heater or hot tub and a hot water heater at the same time, um, if you're, if the, if there's a big AC load and uh, it's it's more than what the inverters are putting out at the time, it can draw from the charge controllers. If you if the connection between the two is, he said too close, and I you know I don't know a, like how many fractions of a second are we talking about for the for the spike to come through or or for the draw to come through, you know before it levels out I, you know, I'm not, I don't know for for sure on that if that's really what it is but the, but he gave me at least something to try so I'm going to try and connect my um, battery positive coming off of the charge controller here to a different place um, to a bus instead that's that's so it has to go through some more wire before it gets there so we'll see maybe that'll change it so that it won't happen again um, but in the meantime thanks to um Soft starts will help those startup loads. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I gotta figure out how to put those soft starts on there. I don't know. You're full solar on that house. What are the power needs and usage? Not in kilowatts, but what kinds of things run on it? Lynn said. So we are, um, well, here's the deal. Most of the time, hardly anything runs on it, right? We're using like 300 watts in the house right now. The problem comes when the geothermal pump comes on to heat the house. And I, I think probably I had it set too high. It's now off, which is why you can see the house is cooling off quite a bit because I turned it off when I went up there a couple days ago. But it, um, it, uh, it, when it comes on, when it was cooling the house over the summer, this is the first time we're really using it a lot with the batteries uh, to heat the house. When it was cooling the house, when it came on, it was like 1500 watts when it was heating the house and I was trying to heat the water to like 120 or trying to heat the fluid to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, then it was drawing like 3000 Watts and it was coming on a lot. Like it was almost constant. Um, so I, I'm going to try and adjust how that works and maybe bring down the temperature a little bit and probably bringing down the temperature, you know, in the house so that we're not trying to get the house to 
75 degrees. Uh, try and decrease that load a bit. So that's a big one. Our water heater is also full electric, which really sucks, but that's what, what we're stuck with right now. That's 4,000 watts when it comes on. We do have the hot tub. I know. What are you doing off the grid with a hot tub? But we have a hot tub. And it's uh, that's 4,000 watts to heat it and then another couple thousand watts to turn on the, the jets. I wish I could get solar. However, it would cost so much to have five trees removed. Oh, yeah. That does suck. Hey, Tech Turtle. Uh, those turn on cycles are super tough on those systems. Yeah. How do we, so soft start. I, I know the, the, um, I thought the geothermal guy said there was a soft start, but by a log burner, yeah, you know, I'm going to have to do that. Ooh, the dreaded electric water heaters. Yeah. Right. I'm going to do a hybrid, um, heat pump water heater at some point, but then I also, I will need to look at the soft start. Cause I swear they did. They said that the, uh, the hot water on the geothermal thing was set to some sort of soft start. And I don't think I, I don't, I don't know for sure if it's still doing that. It might not be zero crossing switches. What is that? Oh, so that they don't come on at the same time. Hi, honey. I have a little bit right here. That's all. Uh, yeah, I do need to make it so that they don't come on at the same time. And that was the other thing that was happening was the hot tub was still was still on. Like right now it's off, but it was still on and it was trying to keep the water at 60 degrees, which is as low as you can set it. So we were having the the geothermal was on and drawing 3000 watts. And then the hot tub would kick on for a brief period and try and heat the water back to 60 degrees if it got below that. And so we would have this huge load, right? So they come on when the AC sine wave is at the midpoint in the cycle. Oh, okay. So that's what the zero crossing switches does. And I do, by the way, Marshmallow, this, uh, or who was it, Steve? Uh, I, I am, I do have the ideas to do better job of heating the water for the hot tub with something other than electricity in the winter. But we'll see how, we'll see how that goes. This is going to be a long-term thing. Anyways, the solution here. The solution here, first of all, was uh, just I drove up there and I wasn't even there. Were we there 12 hours maybe? We drove up there and just turned off the hot tub, turned off the geothermal heater. Uh, and then the most important part was, thanks to Sir Goodenough, and I don't remember who else was helping me in Discord, um, created a battery voltage monitor out of uh, an ESP32. It was actually one of the, was it one of the POE ones? No, it's just a regular old ESP32. Regular old ESP32, one of the Quinn LED ones, running a version of um, ESP Home or running ESP Home. And then with two resistors, I just made a voltage divider and uh, made it, I just, it was kind of fun. It was like I did a bunch of crazy math. <laughs> crazy math. It was just like some some algebra or something. Here, look. Want to see my math? <laughs> so I just used, I ended up with a couple different resistors. I can't remember now what sizes I used. I think I used a, a 100, a 100,000 and a, was it 100,000? Oh, 10, 10 and 570. No, I didn't end up with 10 and 570. I ended up with something else. But anyways, I did this. I did this thing here. Got the value of these two resistors because 58 was the maximum that I wanted the, the battery to monitor and then one volt was was what the ESP32 could monitor, although I think it can go a little bit higher than that. It can go up to three volts maybe. But anyways, it worked out. So with two resistors and uh, some solder and some jumpers and a couple of uh, like battery charging clippers, I made this uh, beautiful little voltage divider. And with that voltage divider, when we got up to the house, I clipped it to the to the positive and negative terminals on the battery. And I now have two different battery monitors. So I did get the one of the charge controllers functioning again. So the charge controller is still working, which is why we got some solar output. Um, and this is the voltage from the charge controllers. But this voltage is now from my ESP home, from my ESP home um, battery uh, monitor. So super cool. Next weekend, I will be up at the Hubit house. And uh, I'll show you this thing. I'll go up to the pavilion and we'll take it off. Yeah, it was. That's right. It was. It was. Was it? Uh, 
one like 1067 1000 ohm and 67 was something like that right because it was a 60 to 1 which is good enough is a flipping genius i mean we all know this but the amount of information in that guy's head is just scary <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it worked. It worked and it worked great. I think it's time to go Victron for your charge controller inverter. Either Victron or a couple EG, ooh, EG4650. Oh boy, what's that? Well, fortunately, so far, Midnight has been replacing these for me. I'm going to assume that they're not going to do that forever. Ooh, that looks fancy. This is the inverter. 48 volt DC, or is this a charge controller? Which one is this? Yep, off grid inverter. 6,500 watts. Yeah, I would need two of these, but that would still be better than what I have. But, anyways, you know, you've probably heard me say, don't build a house for a TV show, right? Uh, that's what we did. We built a house for a TV show, and I did not have the time to really do good research on the solar system and picking out. I just went to some online company that sold off-grid kits and bought the kit. And, uh, I mean, I, I, I've had people say that Midnight is fine and the other, and the inverter company, whatever that I have is fine. But yeah, it certainly has been, it's been a, it's been a struggle, but it's working now. And I got to go back up there this week, um, and replace the other charge controller, which is still dead. Um, anyways. Thank you, Bearded Tinker. Have a good day, man. Thanks for being here. Um, cool. So those are the things that I was working on this week. I was very happy because I know you guys probably heard me talk about these, you know, this trouble. And, and I, I've mentioned before that I wanted to try and create a battery monitor. And now I did. And it works fantastic. I'm very happy with it. So now I have a backup. So now, not only do I have the charge controller, the charge controller has... Uh, output relays. Uh, they have these these output pins that you can connect to. Uh, they're actually tucked back behind there. They're not showing them here, but they're under there. And with those output pins, basically you can um, you there's a, a, some dry contact relay pins in there. So I just have the remote start on the generator, which is just a pair of wires. When they touch, it starts. When they separate, it turns off. I've got those going to the midnight, but I also have them going to a Shelly. And so that either one of those two things can turn it uh, on. If one turns it on, the other can't turn it off, though. If the one turns it on, that same one has to turn it off. Oh, there's the pins. Oh, no, that's the battery positive and negative. Never mind. Anyway, uh, now I also have... In Home Assistant, I have an automation to do that. And I made some new automations. And when I was making these automations, it it just hit me how awesome it has become to have uh, automations the way they are in Home Assistant now. It is so good. Signature Solar has five to 10 year warranties on the EG4 brand. If it fails, they'll replace it. They're based in Arizona. Robert, if I have to replace anything else, that that sounds like a great a great option. I know Victron is good. I have a Victron charger on the uh, RV for the solar panel I put on the RV. Ofer, how you doing, man? All right. Let's see. What did I do? Battery charging generator backup. So this is probably the automation that I did. Yep. So when the house battery voltage is below 48.5, so this was the trigger. And this house battery voltage, that's the new sensor. So that's not the sensor that is uh, from the charge controller. Uh, this is the sensor that I built that's running ESP Home. Okay. So that's that one. And so that's the that's the trigger. And then just look how easy this is to see and stuff. It's so nice. And so, so when this is below 48.5. I don't even need any conditions for this one. Then I want you to turn on the generator. So that's connected to the Shelly device, which closes the relay and uh, connects the remote start for the generator, starts up. 
Then this is important. I want to know what's going on. So I said, send me a notification that says the battery is low and the generator has started. All right, so it does that. Um, then it, it waits for another trigger. So this is rather than having one automation to turn it on and another one to turn it off, I use the wait for automation or the wait for action, I guess. This is the wait for action. Basically, you wait for another trigger. So in this case, the wait for uh, is when the battery voltage is back above 53 volts, which means it's, you know, 50%, maybe a little bit higher charge. So turn it on until it charges to some percentage. And then uh, once that happens, I can turn the generator back off. So it's just the same as this, except for now it turns it off. And then it sends me another notification that just says the battery has reached 53 volts and the generator is off. Pretty slick, huh? That was so easy to do. So easy to do. I'm trying to remember if I did any others like this. Phone notification for low battery. I think I just, yeah, this was just, if the battery gets below 50, then send me a notification. I just want to know, even if the generator doesn't come on, I want to know if the battery is getting low, right? So I can take a look at it and see what's going on. So important to have this kind of a setup. Like sometimes I think I learned how to do home assistant just so I could manage the Hubit house from, from down here. Even though I didn't know at the time I was going to have a Hubit house, at least now that I've got some home assistant experience and ability, I can manage the Hubit house from here. So awesome. So very happy about it. All right, um, so those are the things. Those are the things. You guys want to see something secret? You want to see a secret? Yeah, you want to see a secret. I know you want to see a secret. I'll show you a secret. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's on my phone. It's on my phone. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Ah, here we go. Ring, ring. Thank you very much, Raspy. Thanks, dude. Do you want unicorns or planes? So unicorns or planes? I'm going to play unicorns. You can tell me and then we'll play whichever other one if you want. It's all good. All right. We're going to just save this here. And then you got to see this. Watch this thing. It's tracking the color of the pin. It's not perfect. Uh -huh. What do you think? What do you think? Pretty sweet, huh? Okay, so that thing is called, that's a pixie cam. And I'm using it for a fun, goofy project with my friend. Pixie 2 camera. It's actually super simple. It's actually amazingly simple. And I did actually get it from Amazon. Uh, so the camera itself, 70 bucks. The servo uh, mount thing was another 30 And I put it together in just a couple hours. It was amazing. And it's so easy to program. You base, it, it learns colors. Uh, so you can show it an object with a certain color. Yeah, absolutely give you some links. You learn uh, the... Um, it learns objects by color. And then... Um, it can follow them, it can follow the object around. It, you can use it, it, you can connect it to an Arduino or probably you could connect it directly to an ESP32 or something else that would uh, output for you what it sees based on the color though. It's all based on color. It's all based on like the hue and something, something. So um, it's not a pure image recognition, like it can't tell you that Johnny's at the front door, but uh, if you want it to track like a certain thing, you can you can do that. So that's uh, what I'm doing this for for this funky little project is to get it to um, track, you know, like a ball or something that's a specific color. And it's going to be a little tricky. Can it sort colored candies? It could totally sort. It could probably sort Legos. It could probably sort colored candies. It can it can store. Uh, I think it was seven different hue variations, right? So you program it with that little white button on top. You program it to learn a color. 
you know, learn the exact hue of whatever color. And then anytime it, it sees that, it will report, I've seen that, I've seen that, I've seen that, right? So, and it can do these things, like it can activate these servos uh, to move around, but you could take that information of, oh, I saw this and put it into an Arduino and do something else with it, like sorting M&Ms or sorting Legos or something like that. Pretty slick, pretty cool. NVIDIA Jetson supposed to be better for that kind of work. Ooh, NVIDIA Jetson. Mm-hmm. I don't doubt that there's things that are better, but this was sure easy. NVIDIA Jetson. This is probably, yeah, this is a developer thing, right? Advanced AI embedded systems. Yeah. So if you're building a big product and you want to uh, embed some AI, you can use some of their stuff. But if you're a tinker dude and you want to tinker, this is the thing. Something to try. Has anyone ever used X lights to control an old light orama AC controller? Found one for cheap, Jason says. You ask the guys in um, the pixel heads for sure. We do have a few pixel heads here. Um, I know there's a way. I know there's a way. I don't know how to do it, but I'm sure there's a way. It will be fine on some small garden trailer to follow the user around and dump cargo later in a designated spot like a small helper. Nice, Ferenc. I like what you're thinking. You know what I'm going to use it for? Find the remote control. <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my big secret. I'm going to use it to try and find the remote control. Uh... But it's going to be ridiculous because you're going to have to put like a tennis ball or something and mount it on the remote control. But then it will at least like it'll look and wherever it was last looking is where, you know, is where it'll be, even if you can't see the tennis ball. So anyways, it'll be fun. Watch for that. Be a few months, but. The Jetson Nano. Oh, really? It's a nano developer kit. So this is like a computer. <whistles> mm hmm. AI computer for makers, learners, and developers. I might have to play with one of these someday. That's good to know. I'll keep I'll keep a uh, keep that in mind. It's a pie with a crazy GPU. Is it too late to get to perfect track for holiday season? No, Robert, it is absolutely not too late. We have all of it in stock except black. Black we didn't realize was going to be such a popular color. We've gotten a little bit and it sells out like bang instantly. So I think new houses, a lot of new houses have black trim. We have plenty of white, we have plenty of brown. Um we're going to get some sort of a clay color, which is like a light brown, which is actually probably what should have gone on my house in some spots at least. Squirrel. Huh? <laughs> no thinking tinkerer. How's it going, my friend? Good. Time zones. Are, oh, hey, Johnny. How's it going? Time zone related words. Ladies and gentlemen. Um. So LED... LED questions. Anybody got LED questions? Other LED questions? Squirrel color. <laughs> you mentioned you had a new product, a new control in the last stream. Any update? Mongo Wongo says. So the new one is the Octa, the Dig Octa. I don't have a shipment of them yet um, to distribute, but I will in the next one to two weeks. That's kind of like the worst thing ever to to have to say, but that's the truth of it. He is so good with his videography. The dude knows how to take pictures of stuff. Man. Working on my first WLED project. Might have to give up on learning to solder. No, never give up on learning to solder. But you don't necessarily have to solder, Lynn. What are you trying to do? Soldering can be good. Soldering can... Oh, my! why is my Twitch, uh, Twitch count is at zero? I wonder why. Would 1,296 be too many pixels for... Four foot by four foot square. 
I don't think so. How far apart are they? Like an inch apart? Yeah. That sounds like a great number of pixels. The more pixels, the better. Um, that's a lot of pixels. So you'll have to have, you could still do that with an Uno. You'd have to have, you know, half of them on one data channel, half of them on the other. But no, yeah, I mean, that's a bit, that's a fair bit of power and all that stuff. Wires between runs. It's a staircase. Ugh. Um, yeah, there are people. I wonder why that's, I wonder why that's not showing up on the counter. Yeah, I knew you guys were on Twitch, which thank you very much, by the way, for being on Twitch. I knew you were there, but I didn't know. I don't know why it's not showing up. Ultra HD pixel matrix. 0.6 inch spacing. Man. I mean, that's tight, but why not? You know, I think um, you're probably getting into the realm of like a P10 or a P5 matrix. I think a P10 is 10 millimeters apart and a P5 is five millimeters apart, right? So when you're, and these are, these are tiny little dudes. So they're not big pixels. They're tiny little dudes. It takes a whole different kind of driver and stuff. Um, but when you're talking about a half inch apart, you're, you're talking, you know, you're getting into this range here. So something to think about. Why not just say a TV? <laughs> Will I be getting any more Dig Unos? Yes. The external antenna variety. Yes, I will. And uh, I hope I didn't uh, really mess this up. I, I I went in to look at something for the Dig Unos and I, and I noticed to my shock and also signal boosters. Yes. And also signal boosters. We can do a little testing. We can play around here a little bit and do a little testing on the signal boosters because somebody sent me some signal boosters. They were using a different controller. They weren't using an Uno or a quad and they... They used these signal boosters and they said that it destroyed their controller. So I just need to check, check these and see if there's something wrong with them. I don't think there is. Um, I, I assume it was the nature of the other controller, which was different than a Uno or a Quad. And I don't know. I don't, I don't know what they did. It's, kind of, it's, it's impossible sometimes to really get all the information that you need to troubleshoot or uh, investigate, you know, poor, especially post-mortem. Um, when somebody's trying to like, you know, text and email and stuff, even on the phone, I think it would be hard and without handling it myself and getting in there and can never know exactly what, what went on. But anyway, yes, we'll get signal boosters and uh, yes, we'll get Unos. Oh, what I started to say about the Unos was I put, I, I, when I went in and looked at the Unos, the external antenna Unos, and some of you guys maybe that bought them can tell me this and it's okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to change it, but I went in and looked at the the Unos with external antennas and noticed that I had set the price to $22, which is less than what I pay for them. <laughs> so I don't know how many I sold at that price. I hope I didn't sell a lot of them at that price because I lost a couple bucks on each one of them if I did. Uh, so um, yeah, anyways, maybe it was a good Christmas gift for some people who got an Uno for 22 bucks. So Anyways, but yes, I'll be getting some more Unos and Quads, and we'll be getting the um, the Dig to Go as well. We'll be able to release the Dig to Go, uh, which is going to be really cool too for small indoor types of projects. No wonder they sold so fast, right? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I although I don't think I I think I changed that later. I think I went in because I like scrounged around and I was like, okay, I got twenty two more of these external antennas I can post. For sale. And so I think I went in and instead of putting them in as in stock, I put the, I changed the price. So they still were not in stock. So I may not have sold any of them at that price, but if I did, congratulations or, or whatever. Website says you're out of bottom hole permatrack in all colors. No, 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 no. Really? Uh, if we are, it might just be because Mike is trying to catch up because uh, we don't want to get says out of stock bottom holes we're not i'm sure we're not there's no way we are mike's probably just trying to catch up mike's probably trying to just catch up because i know we posted in in stock a couple days ago and sold a ton um and i'm, I'm gonna see i don't i don't know what he if he was doing something something funky
we'll find out about that. Um, we, we, we should not be out of stock. We just got a huge load in. If we sold it all, I can't imagine we did. Sold them all to the holiday guy. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, well, okay. What else were we talking about? Using 2813 strips. You, you are Paul. Who's using 2813 strips? Let's see about testing these signal boosters, shall we? Let's see about testing these signal boosters here. I got a few of these signal boosters here. And uh, something came up on Facebook um, today. I try and do better at answering questions on Facebook. Um, and if you send me a message and, and ask me a question, don't please don't be offended if I kind of refer you to Facebook or Pixel Heads. I try and go there and answer the question as well. It just that way, you know, we kind of minimize the, the number of times where we're answering a single question for a single person and maybe other people can can um, pitch in with the answer and benefit from the answer potentially. So you're using 2813s? That should be fine. 2813s are just 12 volt 2812s, right? They're 2812s, but they're 12 volt, I believe, if I recall. Or are they the ones that are the backup channel? Maybe those are the ones that are the backup channel. And then the 15s are the ones that are the backup channel and they're 12 volts. Something like that. I don't remember. All right. Oh, so, so what came up on Facebook was somebody had an original quad controller. And then they up, updated, but they updated to like a version 2. So they're 5 volts, so they have the backup channel. And what do you guys do with the backup channel? I can't remember. Do you just put it to ground, I think? Either you put it to ground or you put it in the same data output. I can't remember which one it is. I think I have some here somewhere. Anyway, so what came up was this fellow put in, um, he, he got a version 2 of the controller. Now, this is the version 3. This is the latest and hopefully the last version. And the, this version has these dip switches. So what has... what what went on was uh, originally, and, and Quindor might be able to tell us better. He's not here right now, it doesn't seem like. But originally, I think the the resistor that, that he had on the output here was 33 or something like that, some, some value in that range. And then he did some testing, and then on version 2, he put in the 249 resistor on here. And uh, what we saw with the 249 resistor was it works worked pretty well as long as your wires were separated from each other. But if your wires were close together, as if, if your data wire was close to your ground and power wire, then your data would get some interference potentially and it would weaken and you, you couldn't go very far from the controller before you needed to boost the, the signal um, with a dead pixel or with a null pixel or sacrificial pixel or a uh, F amp or a data booster. That was kind of the impetus for creating these data boosters. And then the data boosters... Uh, came with a little switch to switch between the 33 and the 249. So you go with the um, whatever whatever resistor came out of here. You could basically switch over here, and it would it would uh, make it so you could continue on with a good strong signal. Well, the evolution of this then became these dip switches. So now the board has both 249 or 33, and you can switch between them with the little dip switches. So somebody had an original version of the quad and put in the second version of the quad and then was getting some funky behavior from his lights and was like, what the heck happened? I think that's what happened. And, and, and I think that um, the solution, he can try and peel, and I said this on the Facebook, he can, he can try and peel the wires apart. So if the data wire is butted right up next to the, um, uh, the, the ground wires, you know, like in this kind of a thing, Right, like this for a long distance you can try and just separate them just pull them apart uh, and that might help um, if that doesn't do it here's another here's another version so if it was like this and they were all stuck together you just peel them apart and then that that might work um, then the other option would be to put in a sacrificial pixel so whatever distance I think he had maybe 20 feet or something from here to the to the first pixels put in a sacrificial pixel or one of these, you know, halfway through or something, and that should help. Um, 
So, but anyways, that's that was the problem. And I think the the issue was that that evolution, you know, he kind of got caught in between the two versions where his his worked fine on the first version, but didn't work so well with the second version. And if he'd had a third version, the solution would just be flip your dip switch. Um, but he doesn't have the third version. He's got the second version. So I still have some second versions. Um, this one actually has, this one has a missing piece on it. So this one won't even work. This was one somebody uh, sent back to me because it was missing. It wasn't working. Oh yeah, it wasn't working. And I was able to identify that it's missing a diode here. I think this happens more often than we, um, it doesn't happen that often. I mean, I've sold hundreds and hundreds of these, but I've probably had four or five where something broke on the bottom like that. And it may be in, it may be in shipping. It may be in the factory in the packing. I don't know, but obviously it was after it passed QC, hopefully, <laughs> but it looks like it just, you know, you get bumped too hard and it, and it comes off. So probably the people working in the U S postal service, just getting a little rough with the packages. Let me grab one of these older versions. And I've got some wire here. I've got some really long, I don't know how long it is actually, but I've got some wire. We may be able to try and replicate some of these problems. What do you guys say? Shall we try and replicate some problems? I would love to try and replicate some problems. My OCD wants all those fuse five volts lining up. <laughs> Which ones aren't? Oh, I'm sorry. Here, let's see. Uh, five, 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 five. This one's wrong. I'm doing this for you, Steve. This is for you, buddy. This is for you. There you go. Okay. Are they straight enough for you? You need you need to straighten them up. Is that good? Can you look at it now? Not going to melt your eyes. <laughs> okay. It's all good, man. It's all good. We all have our weaknesses. Everybody's got their kryptonite, you know? All right. Let's see. This one's gotten, this one's not putting any output. Mm, some of these are in here because they don't work. Uh, this one seems to be intact, best I can tell. So this, oh, this is an old, old version. So this is the first version because this has only, this was made for an 8266, right? It doesn't have the two rows of pins. So this is the old, old version. I'm going to start a museum. Uh, this is the new one, but I pulled the resistor off. This was when we were, yeah, excuse me. This one will work. Um, we'll just use a different output because this first output, um, I put, I pulled the resistor off trying to see if I could just bridge it and make it work. That was a silly, that was a silly day. All the supporters are busy. Please try again later. Thanks. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, taking a look at heat pumps instead. Tech for which part? For a reversed fuse will never work. <laughs> uh, my geothermal is a heat pump. It's a it's a ground source heat pump. But what I need for my water heater is a heat pump because that should decrease the the amount of heat required significantly, significantly. I would love to be able to heat my hot tub with the hot with a heat pump. But that may be. That may be a, a dream. Maybe a dream that may never come true. All right. All right. Let's, uh, what should we use? Should we use, let's use this. Let's use one of these for testing. I wrote right on it for testing. So let's use the for testing one. And let's try and, uh, let's try and run some, some pixels here. My pixels. I've got a little test. Where's my little test bundle of pixels? Oh, there they are. So here's a little test bundle I've been using for a while. These are just a test bundle of pixels. Server GPUs uses PCs GPU to heat the pool. <laughs> do what Linus Tech Tips do. Uh, that's a great idea. That's a fantastic idea. I was actually, I was, I was talking to an old friend today and seen in many, many years, but we were, we were chatting it up this morning at a, a little breakfast with some friends. And he was, um, what he does is he, he's in construction and what his company builds is, uh, basically server houses kind of thing. Like, so he, he spends all his time with data centers, cooling 
off the those things. Uh, anyways, okay. So what we're gonna do though is we're gonna try and replicate some issues. Let's try and make some issues. So I've got here a whole bunch of wire. I don't know exactly how long this is, um, but my guess is it's gonna be too long, okay? So we're gonna do too long. Will it make you guys happy if I use ferals for the first time? Set up a crypto mining farm at the Hubit house. That'll heat your hot water. <laughs> Did I mention I'm also having, you know, power supply problems? <laughs> I don't think a server house is uh, going to be great, but you know, yeah, it would, it would solve one problem. Might create a couple more, but I like the idea. Might as well mine crypto. Is crypto still a thing? Okay. Not using glasses, so this can be a little bit hard, but I have made my... I've gotten my feral thing closer at hand now so that I can actually use my ferals. You guys are so proud of me, I know. Nigel's here. Hello, Nigel. How's it going? Miguel, what are we making? We are trying to make a... Um, we're trying to replicate the data signal failure problems that some people have. So I've got an older quad here that has the 249 resistor only. The new ones have a dip switch, so you can go between 249 and 33. But I've got this one that only has the 249. This was the version two. So I'm going to try and replicate the problems that some people have uh, when, when they have an older version, or this version, really. I don't know that all of them did that. but As I said, I think the first version was a different resistor. Okay. Now I'm gonna use Put some feral crimpers on there. Oh, where's my glasses? Old man Z's. Getting older. Huh? Ferals, the world is ending. <laughs> Next thing you know, I won't even be leaking my passwords. Okay. I just need a, I've got a, you know, the kit of ferals that's all different sizes. I need one that's just like a thousand of these tiny ones. All right. That on there, crimp that, and then you crimp this part too, huh? Is that what you do? Is that what the cool kids do with the ferals? I'm new to this whole thing. I've had this feral thing for a couple years. I just haven't used it very often, as you've all witnessed. But it only takes a second, and it probably does save you a lot of hassle later on without your wires fraying all over the place. And All right. Might copy that concept and push solar production to MQTT. My local company enjoys to lock everything behind clouds. Oh man. Hey, if you need to, um, you mean to, to monitor your battery tech do liberal you, are you, uh, you're on solar. If you want to, I, I can so share how I made this battery thing, this battery monitor. Of course, as I'm doing it, I'm like in a rush. Cause I seriously did it. Like I did it at like, I think I started working on it about 7.30 at night, right, sir? Sir, good enough? It was about 7.30 at night or something like that. I started working on it. And me and Zach were going to leave to drive up there to start trying to fix it when he got home from work. And he got home from work at like 10 that night. So I only had like a couple hours. We got your back for passwords. <laughs> it does need to be a video. Yeah, okay, I'll do it. I, I can't believe I didn't do it. But I'll, what I'll have to do is just build another one. I'll have to build another one. Um, maybe we can do that. We can do that next week from the Hubit house. We can do it next week from the Hubit house. Okay. So what I've got here now is the wire and it's long. So it should be long enough to cause us problems with the data signal. That's my hope because we're trying to replicate problems that people have when they have a weak data signal. Oh my gosh, that thing is like all stripped out. So we're going to use a different one and we can't use the, which one did I pull off? Oh, I pulled off LED four, so we can still use LED one. Yeah, I think I used this one for a long time. It looks like I stripped out the screws real bad on some of those. Oh my gosh. And this one's missing a fuse too. I think I blew the fuse on this one. <laughs> How could that possibly be? Nice thing about Ferrell's too, you just pop them in there. You don't even have to screw them down. Look at that. And they just stay 
Oh my heavens. So wonderful. We'll tighten them down anyways, though, just because. Hopefully there's nothing else wrong with this board. I should probably check. I know that I... Oh, gosh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Is this the one? Oh, shoot. Yeah, this one's not going to work. I pulled that diode off. Uh, But that might just be for the relay part. So it should still work. I pulled that one off to try and repair a different one. Come on. Fudge sickles. Well, we'll try it and we'll see what happens. Yeah, this one doesn't have ferrules. This has old-fashioned ferrules where I just kind of soldered. I put some solder on the wires so I could just stick them in there. Okay. And let's see what we're set to. Okay, we're set to 12 volts. So that'll work. All right, and we're going to put this guy on here. And then right now I don't have any LEDs hooked up to this, so let's hook up some LEDs to this. And I was testing these uh, kind of pinchers, which I which I really quite like, to be honest. Let me grab some other pixels, though. Let's see. These 12 volt pixels. Yes, these are 12 volt pixels. And I'm going to be safe and cut the end of this off so I don't short anything. And then we'll find the beginning here. So I think this one doesn't have a connector on the beginning. Yep, good. Perfect. Okay. So these pixels, I had cut this string for something. Who knows what? But this is the DI side. Can't see it because the light, but that says DI. The other indicator is that the big black chip is on the output side. So you can see the wires. These wires go to this side. And then these wires come from the output side where the big black chip is. So if it didn't say DI or if you couldn't see it or if it was no arrow, you can go with opposite of the big black chip is usually the way to go. Okay. So I've got these wires, and I'm going to use this funky looking, these little clippy, clippy do's here, which are not super cheap, so I don't know that I would say this is always the way to do this, but um, I was testing them out, so I have them, so let's do that. So with these, you don't even have to strip it. You just push, push it in there like that. Can you see that? And like that. Okay. I don't know what the amps rating is on these, but it's not great then you kind of just pinch that thing crunch it okay that should do that and that's the plus and the minus and then this is the data they didn't make these at uh as a threefer they only had twos and ones at least when i looked on aliexpress um Okay, there you go. That should pinch that together. We're connected there. So now, actually, I think we're ready to turn it on. Am I missing anything? All right, old curmudgeon greetings programs. How's it going? Chip's not always on the opposite side. Oh, okay. Bummer. Wire gauge depends on the number of pixels load the length of the run. What wire gauge do you recommend for connecting wires to the Juno Quad? Yeah, Mongo Wando, usually 18. I would say most of the time 18.3 is going to be fine, but but Sir Goodenough is totally right. Uh, you, you kind of want to make sure that you've got big enough wire to handle the load. If you have a big load, you might need something bigger. I really wouldn't probably go less than that. You could maybe get away with 20 gauge on some things. I definitely wouldn't go less than 20 gauge, and um, 18 is pretty common and pretty easy. This is All this wire in between these pixels here, this is all uh, 18 gauge wire. So, All right, let's turn it on. Nothing. So that diode that I took off of here probably means this one's not going to work. That's too bad.
So we're gonna have to try an Uno instead. I don't have a quad that has, uh, I don't have a quad that has the old resistor type, um, but this Uno should, I think. Yeah, 249, yep. So this one should give us the same effect. It's a problem with having so many of these things. So this thing is really for parts only. I should probably. Let me just put a big X so we know that it doesn't work. Okay. Let's try that again. Positive this side, negative this side. I still get people too that see old videos and and say, "Oh, there's no jumper on my, you know, I don't, I can't have, a, I don't have a jumper to go between three and five. You know, I, I still need to work on kind of updating everybody, I guess, best we can. All right, so then we're gonna go positive goes out here. There we go. And what the what the Uno doesn't really have, or what the Uno doesn't have uh, that it makes the main difference is the uh, besides the outputs, I guess. But you can make up for the outputs with the with the AE Plus boards. But what it doesn't have is the power injection points. So you don't have like all those five volt fuses. Um, Okay. Oops. If you have one of these AE pluses, then the terminals here go here. So I can hook up three more LEDs here. So this is really a quad as far as outputs goes. It's just not a quad as far as power output goes. Um, okay, let's try this. Yay! And look at that, you can already see some blinking and some screwiness, right? There's some definitely some blinking and some screwiness going on. And that blinking and screwiness is happening because of all this wire. Because we're we're so far from there. Um, but let's try it. Let's let's go to this one on my phone and we'll we'll play with the effects and we'll see. We'll see, we'll make it worse. Okay, we'll make this blinking. So like it's supposed to just be solid green, but they're like blinking and stuff, right? It's not supposed to do that. What's wrong with you? We're going to go into the WLED access point here. I did something wrong and made it so that it wouldn't just pop up. I don't know what I did, but we're just going to go to 4.3.2.1. We're going to go to the controls. All right, we're going to make sure that this is the one we're outputting to. Yep, it is. Now, we may have uh, a little bit to mess with in here because this probably has multiples yeah so one thing that may be happening also is that too out of focus it's not her terrible right it's also not visible there's a very very narrow focal length on these webcams it's probably why i should get lenses or something on them anyways um what so one thing that might be happening here is that you may be if i've got more than 30 leds here um, I may be, it, I may be kind of giving it uh, like a crosstalk because I've got these multiple outputs. So for right now, I am going to shrink the outputs on all of these to like one. I don't want to delete them, but I'm going to shrink them to one. Because I'm not, I'm, I might use output number two. Well, maybe we could play with the other outputs too, but we'll see. Human detected at the door. And then for this one, we're going to say there's 50. I don't know how many there are on this string. Oh, clear. Ah, I messed it up. I hit the wrong button too fast. So now they're all green. And actually what you notice is that did kind of stop all the crazy flickering, right? 
it kind of stopped all the crazy flickering. So some of the some of the time, I think with the crazy flickering, it's because if you have, say, you've got fifty pixels, and you hook up fifty pixels to output number one, but output number one in your settings is only set to thirty pixels, and then output number two is set to thirty pixels. There's some mess up, right? Because output number one thinks it's only getting thirty pixels, and output number two thinks it's taken up pixel number 31 to 50 and it's not if you do, if you have them all connected this way so just make sure that your your led outputs match what you actually have connected to your outputs so in this case i'm assuming that there's about 50 leds on this led output number one and then i'm just saying that there's one led on each of these other outputs so that there's no overlap um so that might be that might have been why we were seeing the flickering because now the flickering is gone so let's see if we can make the flickering happen. Um, we're going to go LED preferences. We're going to go to, we're going to up this 850 to something a lot higher. We're going to go, there's probably a 10 amp fuse on this thing, right? Yep. So we're going to go to like 5,000. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm upping the current that it can allow up to five amps now. So allow the current to go up. Okay. And then we're going to go back here and we're going to turn the brightness way up. Okay, still not flickering. But maybe if we go to some effects. Now, some of the effects that are the hardest on these things are uh, candy cane is a tough one. I'm not having any troubles. I need more wire. I do need to fix the colors, though. So I'll go back to the config, back to the LED preferences, back to this and change the RGB to... GRB to RGB. Now, now the, instead of green, it's going to be red. Okay. That actually looks great. That's actually not causing a problem at all. Okay. We know what that means. It means we need to put more wire in. This is not enough wire. Uh, but if 18 gauge is what the pixels have, do you very often need to pull extra power to the other end? Yeah. Uh, some people put in 16 gauge wire for power injection. You know, I'm not going to tell somebody that they don't have to have, I mean, they don't have to have it. I'm not going to tell them not to do it if they want to do it. It's cost more money to have bigger wire, but you can do it. Okay. So let's go, let's turn these off for a second. So we need more wire. Um, okay. Well, that didn't work. I was going to try and show you how to make it fail and it didn't fail. I have here a little bit more wire. This isn't a lot. This is really thin wire though. This is 22 gauge wire. Maybe we can just try and go from, we can just try and go from here to there. I really thought that was gonna fail. So when people have like 20 feet, I just don't understand. Maybe it's because they have small wire or maybe it's because they're, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what it is. Okay, we're gonna use these three. We're gonna use the the red, the black, and the blue. Uh, red, the black, and the yellow. Red, the black, and the yellow, sorry, not blue. And then let's try and, how do we wanna do this? I wanna take this guy off. I'm supposed to be showing you how to make it malfunction. It just functions too well. So we're going to go red to red. This is just going to, I'm just going to stuff these in there. This is a 22 gauge solid copper. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay. Then that means I need some other little kind of clippy do's. So here's these other little clippy do's, which I actually like quite a bit. I like these clippy do's. Not sure I would say you're going to be able to use them outside unless you put them in a box or something else, but. They're pretty easy to use. Got maybe too much wire hanging out, but. There we go. Oh, let's put this, let's do it in the right order. Okay. And then we're gonna go red here. Oh, now my ferrules are too big. Oh, I'm pushing the wrong side. Ferrule.
Okay, there's that part. And now we'll take this part and we will put it into the Uno. And I'm hoping that the smaller gauge wire will, will cause us a problem. Maybe it'll make it uh, degrade the, the data signal a little bit more. But not, oh well, I guess. If not, we'll try something else. Oh, here's a good, oh, here's a good, here's a good troubleshooting thing that we just discovered. So sometimes I do hear people say, oh, I just got one pixel lit up. I just got one pixel lit up. All I have connected over here is the plus and the data. So if you get just one pixel hook lit up like this, check your ground. I'm going to try something though, too. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put this. So it's just the data and the ground. And it doesn't look like it's doing the same thing. So I guess I would, if you get just one pixel lit up, I'll say, check your ground. Check your ground. Your ground may not be completing the, the circuit there. Okay, and now that we've got the ground hooked up, as well as the plus and the data, now that single pixel is not uh, doing its misbehavior. All right. And that was without the controller on there, too. I guess I shouldn't have done that, but that worked. Dang it, they're not flickering either. They're still not flickering. Uh, Clippy Doos? Yeah, look, search for Clippy Doo. Why, why would Clippy Doo not be a thing? <laughs> uh, AliExpress. Let's look at my orders. Uh, uh -huh. oh, signing into AliExpress is so painful sometimes. They make you, like, verify your email. Okay, good. They didn't do it this time. Let's go to the orders. Oh, wait, we had some flickering. Yay. Here's the clippy doos. Here is the clippy doos. Oh, good. I can actually get a, can I get a, a, a link? Text link. Sweet. Get a link. Copy. All right. Awesome. So here's a link to the clippy doos. Oh, I guess the camera's in the way. This is them. And it's, you know, a, it's a big, oh, Sir Goodenough's texting me. Sir Goodenough saying, dude, dude, get the camera out of the way. <laughs> it worked. Hey, hey dummy. <laughs> it still says, hey, dummy. All right. Um, this was a bag of them, of a bunch of them, actually. Let's see how many of them were there. 20, 50, or 100. Um, so 20 of them, if you want the three, so 20 of them is only $2.10. I think I bought 100 because there's only five bucks for 100 of them. And they're pretty nice because they're super convenient. I don't know what, you know, we have to look on here and see if it says anything about what current rating they have. I suppose we could try and put a bunch of current through them and melt them. So for the 12 streams of, oh, do you see that flicker? You see that flicker? Did I not put a link in there? Let's try that again. There's the Clippy Do. Clippy Do link. Gary, Gary Dean, can somebody answer your question? Give us a go, Gary. What's your question? Somebody will try and answer it. I wonder if now let's go back in here and now, maybe now that we've got uh, a little bit more of a, of a weak link, go back to this for a minute. Now that we've got a little bit more of a weak link, let's try and change the effect. Oh, I have to reconnect. Because this one's not on my... Oh, see the blinky? It's not supposed to blink like that. suppose you'd need three times as many Wagos for that. Wagos are great, but they're not, they're not as cheap as that. Oh, no. Where's, what's happening? I was going to say, for, the 12, for one of the 12 streams of Christmas, we need to do a melt things stream, right? Where we just melt things. All right, let's do candy cane again. And let's see, candy cane. And then let's turn the brightness way up. It's really not doing much. It's just a little flicker sometimes. Just a little flicker. Another thing we could do to try and make it misbehave is go into the config, go to the LED preferences, and try and we'll, de we'll decrease the amount of amps that will let it run. 
So we'll go back down to 850. So even though it's at max brightness, it's max brightness is really low because we set the max current. And then we're going to go in again and we're going to change the LED number. We're going to change this to like 500. We're going to let it think that there's a ton. And so it's really going to limit the current. Yeah, there you go. So, so to get it to mess up like that, what I did was I, I told it that there's 500 LEDs. Okay. I said, I put in here for the length that that's 500. Then, or, or, and also I changed the max current way down to 850 again, 850 milliamps. So if I set the max current back up to 5,000, it'll work. But there is a little bit of flickering there. See that? There's a little bit of flickering. And that little bit of flickering is because the data signal has become like weakened. Okay. So let's fix that. So the fix for this is to replace our little, what did we call these things? Because I liked that. The diddly do, not the diddly do, something else. I like the name. We're going to have, the name's going to have to stick. Clippy doos. Clippy doos. <laughs> hey, Mike47, how's it going? Okay, what if you get no response at all and both lights on your dig quad are on? Should say it. Or should say LEDs are both on. So Gary, if you've got no clippy do, clippy do, I like it. If you've got the lights on that say like you've got power, you know, like this, you got a light here and a light there, but nothing's coming on on your pixels. First thing to check is your data output. Make sure that you're in your software, that your data output is set correctly so that it's set to 16 if you're using one of these new ones uh, instead of two. XHF connectors, huh? Scrolling around here. Yeah, make sure and make sure you've got it connected to the correct channel and make sure that you're oh those. Yeah, I've got I've had some of those before. I've had some of those break. Um I've had these break sometimes. But yeah, they're they're nice, they're convenient. Um I have had their little the little clippy doos break. The little thingy doos. <laughs> Could you post a link for the Clippy Doos or its real name? Here, this is the link for the Clippy Doos. I posted two. There's two links for the Clippy Doos back up that way a little bit, Paul. Two links for the Clippy Doos back up there. I did it two times in just in the last couple minutes. Now I've got something else in my clipboard. So, all right. So we are going to try and put in one of these data boosters. So we've got this length of wire from the controller and we're going to pursue We're going to say that this is, I don't know, it's probably about eight feet of wire. And then this other one has got to be 20 plus feet of wire going out. So we're going to take one of these data boosters. We're going to right now it's set to 33. I don't know if this is the one, I mean, this may be the one that the guy said, uh, was, was, uh, you know, caused his thing to smoke. Um, it's hard to see, but there is an arrow. You see that? Yep, there's an arrow pointing that way. So we're going to say the data in is going on this side. So we got data in there. And then, or ground in, data in the middle. And then five volts on the top. I do miss my wow stick since it gave up the ghost. And my, my relationship with Banggood seems to have left with Woody. Okay, ground data positive on the input side. It says D-I-N, and there's an arrow going that way. All right. Now on the other side, I've got ground. I don't even know what somebody could have done to have fried their controller. I, I, don't, I just don't get it. But maybe it was their controller's output wasn't guarded by voltage regulator. I don't know. All right, so let's set it to, yeah, we're going to set it to 33. We'll leave that. I don't even need to turn those on. Okay. So they've come on. Let's see if we can make them flicker again. The LED access point. 4.3.2.1. The controls. Turn up the brightness. Turn on candy cane. 
I think the reason candy cane is so uh, so much blinking is because it's um, red and white. Oh, there's still a little bit of flickering there. Still a little bit of flickering there. So in this case, the data booster might not be the solution. There's more flickering with the there's more flickering with the 249 though. If I change that resistor to 33, it is less flickering. Still flickers a little. But that's with the on the 249. So that's with the 33. So that's what these guys are really good for. And the rest of that flickering might be because I still have it set to like a ton of LEDs. Yeah, I still have it set to 500. Let's go down to, back down to 50. Okay. Woo. Now they're really bright because it's not trying to spread that current over so many lights. What are we testing exactly? I was trying to, we're testing, I'm, my main purpose was to test these because somebody sent these back and said that it fried his controllers. Um, I think he wanted me to replace his controllers and they weren't, they weren't Digunos. They were something else like an M5 stack or something. Um, so I, he sent them back. So I'm going to test them and see if there's anything actually wrong with them. It's, there seems to be nothing wrong with them so far. And then I was just, I'm trying to make the data signal go wonky. So the things that I've done that have made the data signal go wonky are tell the controller that there's a bunch of LEDs, turn the current limiter way down in the controller, and then they went pretty wonky. I tried putting really long length of wire on here and it, it didn't actually make it go wonky. Anyways, if somebody can help me, I have a dig quad, both boards light up LEDs, but when I go to hook up a string, there's nothing, no light or even a flicker. Did he do it backwards? Maybe. So Gary, did you go into your settings and check your output? Happy Halloween, Tony. 30 degrees Celsius tonight. You nut. Forget that. So Gary, what you need to do, where you need to go, Gary. Oh, my mom's calling. Oh, sorry, mom. That's my mom. Um... All right, Gary, so if you go go into your settings on WLED, okay? We'll do this with you real quick. Go into your settings, LED preferences. Scroll down here to where it says LED outputs. And then uh, right here where it says GPIO, you're, it should be set to 16. It should be set to 16. If it's set to 2, then it's that's the problem. That is the most common problem reason for what you're describing there's lots of other things so we can keep troubleshooting there's lots of other things but that's that's the most common reason all right so now we know this data booster is okay so let's change it out for one of these other data boosters he sent back see if we can find one that's bad i would like to do more of this where i you know somebody sends me something that's not working and i stream the troubleshooting because uh, i think that would help i think that would help people a lot Sometimes I don't know. I, sometimes I, I, it's just justified. I just, I test it and I go, yeah, it's doing what you said it did. It's not working. And I can't see a physical reason why, and I can't see a reason in the settings. So I just going to assume that there's something in the, uh, electrons, how the electrons are passing through things in the board. Something is broken. That's too small for my eyes to see. Okay. Ring, ring, ring. Joseph Johnson subscribed. Oh, let's do the train. Train for Joseph. Choo choo. Train with a semi truck horn. I know. Aha! This one's no good. Okay. Uh, it didn't smoke anything here, but it's certainly stopping anything from coming out the other side. And my con this is all good. Okay. So let's voltmeter out of this thing. Okay. 
Let's put a voltmeter on this guy and see if it's just not getting voltage to the other side. Okay. It's getting 12 volts. So then is there data voltage? Very little. So my guess is that it's this uh this little this little uh Yeah, no data voltage. Now I wonder if that's what has caused issues there. Okay. Well, so this one's not working. I don't know. This is one of those times where it looks like I don't see a, an issue on the outside, but I bet you it's one of these little components, probably this one. Um, could be this one. That's really all there is to these. I mean, these are about as simple as it comes. I don't see anything missing, or do I? There's something missing right there. Nope. I don't see anything missing. Okay. We're going to put an X on this one. And we'll test these others. We got a couple more of these to test. Like I said, the power supply is fine. I checked perfect voltage. So we're on the boards. Could I locate this protective diode? I'm at work right now enjoying the broadcast. Uh, known as Viper 711. Wow, that works, actually, 7-Eleven. <laughs> um, does it smell fried? No, it doesn't smell fried, and it doesn't feel warm. Doesn't smell fried, Steve. Doesn't feel warm. Um, let's see. Power supply is fine. Check the voltage. Run the protective diode. Uh, on the board, on the bottom. So that's another thing. That's something you can look for, Gary. Look on the bottom. And see if you see any solder pads that don't have a component on them. I know my focus is bad, and I do sincerely apologize. I will try and get just exactly in the right focal length. I think what I need to do is improve my stream setup, don't you think? Maybe Santa Claus bring me some new stream setup stuff. Right here are a couple of bare solder pads. There should be a component there. There's not. No. Uh, we're going to fix this. Why so big, OBS? Why so massive? Let's see if we can just let it do autofocus. Okay. Focus, focus. No? Autofocus? Oh, there it is. Yay! Yay, autofocus. Okay. Maybe I should leave it on autofocus. Um, so right here, you can see that there's a missing component. It says D12. There's supposed to be a diode there. It's not there. That's why this wouldn't work when I tried to turn it on. So. I've seen this one be missing. I've seen this one missing. I've seen these go missing. So they can just get knocked off, I think, either in shipping or in manufacturing. I don't know. But look at the back of your board. Look at the bottom side and see if you see any blank solder pads like this that look like there should be something there, but there's not. You don't have to you know, be an electrical engineer or anything to figure out that, hey, that looks like something used to be there and it's not. Okay. Because if there's not something, if there's a solder pad that looks like that, you know, that's probably your problem. It's most likely there should be something there and there isn't. So um, if that's the case, and, and all of these things, the, the last line of troubleshooting is message me and I will 
send you a label. You can send it back to me and I'll, and I'll, um, try and fix it or, or replace it. And, but I really try and not get to that point. You know what I mean? What does it taste like? <laughs> so we need to come up with a whole bunch of things for me to, uh, test out to the point of failure for the 12 streams of Christmas. Let's just run a bunch of power through things where it doesn't belong. Remember we smoked, we smoked the D one mini last year, didn't we? I put 12 volts on the input on like the, the input side of it or something like that, the data side. And it went, it went poof. It was pretty crazy. Sparked and flared and fried. That was awesome. Okay. Round and data and power. Okay, let's see if this one works. Whoa, Ooh, okay. It went a little funky for a second and then it went okay. Let's see if we can move this. Okay, doesn't seem to have changed anything. We'll go back in here and put it on the thing. Let's put some LEDs in the microwave. <laughs> I could go to like the Goodwill and get a microwave. Um, all right, let's go back. Let's let's start saving this thing. Oh, my, my mom left me a voicemail. A long one. Okay, Wi-Fi. Oh, Flickr. All right, so now we're going to go here. We're going to make this a little bit easier for me to keep testing. So what we're going to do is... Go to, go back, go, right, we're going to go into the controls here. And we're going to go to effects. We're going to set this to candy cane. I passed it. Did I pass it? There it is, candy cane. Turn the brightness way up. Go to the config. LED preferences. Okay, it thinks it only has 56. It says, okay, so that's pretty bright. That's about what it's going to get. So now what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go back here. We're going to go back to the beginning. And we're going to make a preset. Okay, set, preset, create a preset. We're just going to call it one. Okay, save preset. Now, and back in the config, back in, is it LED preferences? There's a place to put in which preset you want it to play when it boots. Here it is. Apply preset blank at boot. We're going to apply preset one at boot. Now, when we turn this thing off and turn it back on again, it will go into this same um this same effect, so I don't have to keep doing this every time. All right, but this one looks like it's working. Okay, so I think this one's good. Let's turn it off. Take this off again. So too good. And he did say that like one of them, you know, he said it fried his board and then he was too afraid to use the rest of them or something. So um, I said, just send them back. I'll give you your money. There was four of them. Where'd the other one go? I thought there was four of them. Really? Oh, here it is. This one. Yeah, okay. This is not the X. No. Okay, good. The X one is over there. I tried to put the X one out of reach so I wouldn't grab it. Play with it again. Ouch. It's hurting my fingers. Okay. Ground. Data. Power. All right. I'm going to set it at 249 to start. 
And we'll turn it on again. Boom, right to candy cane. So that's what happens when you do your preset and the thing looks like it's working fantastic. Switch to 33, I wouldn't expect it to work any worse. 33 works quite well. Okay, nothing wrong with that one. So that's it. What's data booster precious? What uh, data booster do? Data booster, so if you have a situation where your lights are like flickering and going kind of crazy, and you've got a lot of wire between your controller and the first light, the first pixel, that's when you may need a data booster. Because this data signal is only like three volts when it comes out of here. And if you've got a lot of really thin wire between the controller and the first pixel, uh, you may get a degradation of that. So we're gonna, so that's what the data boosters do. By Doc A. Fantic. What's a Fantic? What's that? Oh, my back hurts. I got the ADXL wired, installing the packages to see if I wired it correctly. All right, good luck, curmudgeon. Good luck. Did we help Greg or Gary? I wouldn't know. I'm not a window licker. Are you by chance a window licker? It does not smell. Oh, no, I think he was talking to me. I think they were talking to me, Gary. Not to, I think they were asking me what it smells like or... But it tastes like I don't think they were talking to you. Um, they weren't. They certainly weren't trying to be rude. If that's how it came across, don't worry about that. I uh, that wasn't the intent. Um, okay, what else can we talk about? We got about another 15, 20 minutes. Anybody else want to? It's getting a bit weird in here. What are you licking? <laughs> Uh, so I, I tested those data boosters and I did think that this one is bad and I don't know why. Um, I don't want to connect it backwards, do I? Why would you use a data booster rather than a logic level shifter? This is a logic level shifter, Mike. That's what this is. Yep. So this, you can use this. You can use a logic level shifter um, if you, you know, to wire up the same kind of a thing. You can also use a pixel. Just stick a pixel in there, same thing. Fantic. Oh, wow. Nice. So that looks like, that looks that looks great. So is this thing pretty strong? Did it work okay for you? And you charge it with USB. Oh, that sucks. I, don't buy me one, I'll buy myself one. And here, if, oh, you got the link. If anybody else wants one, grab it. Oh, my screen's in the way. Thank you. There you go. Sorry. So good enough did a did a review of this thing, this Fantic screwdriver. Sounds good. I need it. That LED costs thirty dollars. Difference between this and that, I take the thirty dollars. So to have this would not have an LED on it. My honest opinion, experience the operating of the device. See what happens from pulling the shrink wrap through, chasing some screws. Awesome. So good enough does videos too, by the way, if you haven't, where's your link on here, buddy? What are we fixing dot today? That's awesome. Good for you, man. Supports are good enough. He does a lot for me. Guy animation courtesy of three atives. I love we have our little community. You guys are great. You guys are fantastic. Scroll down to, there's a link down here for the video. Nice pictures too, by the way. No, no place like Gnome for the holidays. Bitly channel URL. Okay, let's do this. Make sure everybody is subscribed. Let's get Sir Goodenough some love. Give Sir Goodenough some love. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Do you have to inject power with it? You don't have to separately inject power with it, Jose. Um, the it, It's kind of injecting power. You know, it, it, I shouldn't say that. It's not really injecting power. These two terminals on the side, this thing comes with these little guys so that you can inject power on these terminals on the sides. 
the, the bottom one is negative, the top one is positive. And if you run a separate pair of uh, your wires, you can inject power there too. So it kind of makes it a convenient place to inject power. And now with the 1111 sale, we may see good prices for sure. The Moonraker YAML seems to be working okay. So far at least. What are you doing, curmudgeon? What are you doing? Black screen, where's the host? You don't see me? Am I being blocked? Maybe somebody tried to uh, copyright my face? All right, what other, uh, so what other issues? Anybody else have questions? I want Gary to get his thing fixed. So Gary, um, get to when you get to be able to look at your board and um, check the settings and stuff, uh, come to Discord and let us know how it goes in the LED channel, and uh, we'll try and get you go. What was your last good purchase? The Pine Seal. Oh yeah, the Pine Seal. That's that was the that's this um, a different version of this. I love this soldering iron. This uh, this is definitely like once you buy one of these, you'll never go back to a different kind of soldering iron. This one, you know, it's not a battery. Obviously, it would last about three minutes, um, but it plugs into my bench power supply. It runs off. Actually, you can run it off anything between, I think it might even go down to five, five to 24 volts. This was the actual whatever brand it was that was kind of the first TS100. But I know that there are others like the Pine. I think you guys are talking about. Yeah. Hey, Phil, how's it going? I see you. Black Friday's become Black November in the UK. Started in October. <laughs> the pencil work out type c welcome smart homer thank you joseph oh joseph became a member fantastic thank you joseph joseph i have these little animations i play would you like oh oh another one zoltz nedblu thank you very much i'm sorry that i said your name bad um, so I have these little animations. You want me to play some squirrels? I got the unicorn farting and an airplane. I'll let you, I'll let you tell me. 35 volts does everything else. Oh, it's 35 volts. Oh, $35. $35 for that. I think this other one was probably a lot more expensive. This, this other one. Teacher gone tech. Jor, how you doing? 80 watts. What other questions? What other issues? Do you need to use a Falcon Pie player in X lights or can you use the Dig Uno? You don't, well, the, we got pixel heads here, but I would say you don't have to have a Falcon Pie player. You can use a Dig Uno and it would be, if you did, it would probably be an extra bonus to have one like this that has the SD card slot um, with the AE plus. Uh, but I don't even think you have to have that, right, guys? For the pine, the pine sill as well. Oh, cool. Sir Goodenough's got a video about the pine sill as well. <laughs> okay. I haven't heard. So we're going to play my new favorite. Stair project, putting LEDs underneath each step and on the sides. I have loads of questions. Where's the best place to go for the questions to get answered, Joseph says. To uh, Discord. And then the, he toots out my, poops out my, my head. You can run X schedule on your computer instead of Falcon Pie Player. So yeah, Joseph Johnson, uh, Discord. And I'm sure Sir Goodenough or one of these dudes can drop a link real quick. And you can join Discord. And there's an LED channel specifically for a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, yep. Dex, the pixel heads on discord, man. I survived because of them. And are good enough. We'll, we'll get you worked out, Gary. We'll, we'll get it working. Most likely there's some kind of a setting we can tweak. Uh, there's a lot of different settings and you just get one of them in the wrong spot and it, and it doesn't do what you want it to do. So that's where we'll do a lot of our troubleshooting, but then, uh, you know, last, last resort, 
Oh, pictures, by the way, as well. So send pictures. If you're not sure about the bottom of your board you're looking at, you're like, I don't know if there's a, a, a component missing. Take a picture and post it. And all of us have seen them enough to know when there's something missing. So post it there and we'll, we'll help you. Bring back the proper Black Friday when people rip TVs out of each other's hands in the stores and fight in the streets like the good old days. Amen, Steve. Gosh, you don't even have to get up in the morning anymore. You have to you go out after Thanksgiving dinner. Lame. Nobody's worth fighting. Okay, who was it that was asking? Mongo. Mongo Wongo, you were asking about Permatrack. Uh, Mike wrote back and said, uh, there is stock now. So there was some, some snafu. But now it's, it looks like he says it's back. Paul, thank you. A must-have for those without a nice iron, for sure. Please come to Discord. Post pics and WLED screenshots. We'll get you taken care of and help figure out the issues. Man, you guys are just so good. Just so good. Tech Turtle, you still making uh, laser-cut things and, and etched things? I've been giving away those mugs. Most stores, you just order it online and pick up any time on Black Friday. Yeah, there's that too now. Yeah, the good old days. I remember going into Walmart at 3 in the morning and they hand you a 5-hour uh, energy. <laughs> Over at uh, Target, I was in Michigan in Ann Arbor. Go Blue, by the way. Beat those Spartans last night. Yeah, uh, yeah. Target, 5 in the morning or whatever, 4 or 5 in the morning. They give, you a, they give you a donut and a hot chocolate while you're waiting outside for them to open the store. Awesome. Turtleplates.com. Ooh, let's check that out. T-U-R-T-L Plates.com Oh, yeah. There you go. So Tech Turtle does, he's got a laser cutter and he does uh, plates for mounting things, which is fantastic. Fantastic. Is it going okay? You getting a few here and there? I think I can I think I should be able to post this. You should have been able to post it. I sat in line for 13 hours for an Xbox 360 when they were a thing. How much longer? Uh, five minutes, four five minutes, minutes, four minutes. Not bad. Good. You know what? If you can, if it can pay for the hobby, you're doing great. That's what I set out to do with the, with all the Dr. Z's stuff is just, I want to do all these crazy things. Be nice to have a little bit of income to offset it. And it's, it's worked out. It's definitely worked out. What other questions? Anybody else have questions, things I can answer? So next week I will be up at the Hubit house and, uh, I'm actually going to be not just, uh, there for myself. I'm actually going up to help Bracken, who is the excavator friend I have up there and uh, with the long ZZ top looking beard the dude that was on the TV show with us. Um, I'm going to help him install Permatrack and lights. Any word on the Ditch to Go? Bo, as soon as Quindor gives me the thumbs up, I will post the Ditch to Go's for sale. But he he has a master plan, uh, and I think he wants to make sure that there are enough available so that we don't just run out instantly, although I think we're going to run out pretty darn quick. I, 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 I mean, I don't know how many he'll be able to put out, but those things are so slick. And if you don't know what the Dig to Go is, has he has he shown the Dig to Go? I think he has, or I have, right? So I can show the Dig to Go here without like major spoilers. So the Dig to Go is another controller from Quindor, and this I actually he gave it to me with the cover off of it, but it comes with oh, and the little button is missing now. But it, it, it comes in this little case like this. It's already done. Like, you don't have to open it at all. And it has a button on it, but I seem to have misplaced the button part. But basically, it's USB-C power here. So it's only for 5-volt pixels. It's got one output. You don't really mess with the output. You, you can just pull this off and plug it back in. Um, and then it's got, it's got, obviously, a button here to connect to. It's got um, IR receiver for infrared remote controls over here on this side. That's what those guys are. And then it also has a microphone right here. This is a microphone. And uh, it's got 
uh, the extra pins or some extra pins. I don't know which pins those are. Oh, wait, it says right there on the board. Let me see. Let me see. Where's my, where's my, where's my doodly doos? Yeah. Uh, so GPIO 25, 23, 22, 21, and then ground and three volts and ground and five volts on the other side. So you got four extra GPIO pins and, uh, a couple of extra power pins. So you could do more LEDs with that if you wanted to. Totally could. And then it's just got this nice like embossed. It says Dig to Go. You can't see it because of the focus and the light. It says Dig to Go on here and it's like raised. It's awesome. So this will be the the target here is for projects that are even smaller than what you would use for a Dig Uno. Uh, and of course it comes with a fancy little case and a button. So I took one of the ones he sent me. This was the other one. But I took one of them and I put some lights above Dawson's bed and just put a piece of uh, double-sided sticky tape, stuck it to the wall, and now he has... Uh, and it comes with sound reactive uh, WLED on it. So I stuck it to the wall and uh, put on some a strip of uh, the, the um, 60 LEDs per meter so they're a little closer together. And yeah, now he's got some cool lights in his room too. So... Sweet. Is there a DIY version of the Dig to go? I don't think so, man. I don't think so. Cause this is made, this is all made with um, machine placed parts. This is all machine placed parts. So you would have a doozy of a time creating that. I would love to ask Quindor if I can uh, make them on my pick and place machine though. Cause I do have a pick and place machine. But. For now, that's what we got. All right. How many channels does the basic node MCU produce, Peter says? So like the old-fashioned, the, the 8266, um, you can run several. You can run four outputs off because we used to put those on the quad. So you can run four outputs. <sighs> I think... Um, I mean, I don't know, guys. Is it less than what you can do with the 32? I don't think so. So you probably go, you can you can do four channels, Peter, and you could probably do 600 LEDs per channel. If you, um, if you have, I mean, I would try that and see. And if it, uh, if it stutters or flickers or gives you problems, then you may be running into the upper limits of the 8266 processor. Um, and, you, and you'd probably be better off with a 32. There you go. Tech Turtle says the 8266, which is what you're talking about, Peter, the old Node MCU, will get three or four channels. The 32 goes up to eight channels that you can get out. The moment I have one channel with the pin connected to D4, I think off the top of my head, yeah, that's probably right. And there, there's just other, there's other pins that you can use. You might have to look at the pinout and just make sure, like just Google the pinout guide for the Node MCU and see what pins aren't being used for something else. Come on, big river. Where's it going? Why did why did it? Uh, oh man, that's lame. Anyways, so there's uh, some of these pins that you can use, and some of these pins you shouldn't use, right? So you can use a lot of them. Four is the one you use, or you said D four. So D four is actually GPIO two, I believe. If I remember right from this. You want to try and avoid TX and RX, but you don't have to. You can still use those. Um, but 12, 14, 5, 16. 16 is the wake pin. I don't know if that makes a difference on that one. Uh, you could probably use... I mean, there's several of them you can use. I don't remember which ones are which or, or why. Not to forget, you'd probably need a level shifter as well. You definitely would want a level shifter. Yeah, if you're especially if you're going any any more than a foot maybe away from the Node MCU. When I think of all the how much have I learned, and, I, and I'm still trying to actually communicate it all. Uh, I'm about to order a Dig Quad. Hopefully, the boat to Australia goes quickly. Yeah, they're right there by you. 
Just wave, you know. What are they? They're east of you guys in China. It's nice being a noob and standing at the, on the shoulders of giants. Current version of the Dig Uno and Dig Quad and all the knowledge out there. Thanks all. You are welcome, Jeff. You are welcome, that one, Jeff. You are welcome. Uh, it's been so great to have, uh, you know, been been part of a community that's grown like this. Hey, look at this. I heard that guy, The Hookup, has a video about which pins can be used. That's right. He does. He does have a good a good video about that. He's got lots of good videos. How's it going, Rob? Gosh, that was a long time ago, too. Did you do it on 32s and, and uh, 8266? Or did you just do 8266? I used to watch Rob's videos every day. I still do sometimes. Yep, 32 and 66. Awesome. There you go. Drop a link. Drop a link, Rob, if you can, if you got it handy. Otherwise, if, if everybody, I can't imagine anybody here hasn't already subscribed to the Hookup Rob. But if you haven't, go do it. Just wanted to say I've been watching your videos for ages and learned a lot. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very much. All right. Well, it is nap time for this guy. Time to time to put some Z's out of this head. Okay, anything else? Any last uh, cheese days, cheese mace? We call up the kitties. Sign off. Take a nap. Can the ether port add-on card be swapped for a dig quad to a dig uno? Yes, yes, totally can, Terry. Totally can, and uh, the, you know the the difference will be um, the dig uno won't be able to use channel the the LED three and four hardware outputs that you've got in this in the settings for WLED so you can just go in and delete those but you'll you'll be able to use two of the outputs for the dig quad for sure okay great stream happy upcoming LED season take care don't fall off your ladders yes 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 please don't fall off your ladders accelerometer works but the m3 bolts short something no print some isolation okay all right guys how do we want to do this Holly. Stock's fault, I'm into Home Assistant. She is disappearing. She's the same color as the green screen. All right, how do you want to sign off? Sign off like ghosts? Okay, we're going to sign off like ghosts. Ready? As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios. Have a safe and fun Halloween, everybody. Adios. Till next time at the Hubit house. And then I got to find the button that stops this.